Hey everyone, um, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a new series on the Civil War since I don't have a lot of um, new 160th videos coming out since it's still 2023. Um, and today we're going to be going into the first sort of stages of war. Um, the election of 1860 has, so to say, four major candidates. John Bell, not John Bell Hood, no, not that Confederate general. Um, John Breckinridge, who was under, um, who was vice president under, or let me rephrase that. John C. Breckinridge was vice president under the 15th president, James B. Cannon. And then, um, I'd say the two major candidates were Stephen Douglas and Abraham Lincoln. Now, those two figures are, um, very different and very alike. Abraham Lincoln, he'll grow up in a shack in Kentucky. His mother will die at a very young age. And he and Douglas were friends for a little while, but technically they can were considered political opponents. Um, Lincoln's more on the Republican side, whereas Douglas, who is a Northerner himself, will vouch for the Southerners. Likewise, they want the Southerners at this point want Douglas in office. Since the previous year's 1859 John Brown raid on Harper's Ferry, a failed um, attempt to revolt against the southern slave, southern states, by taking arms at the at the key point of um, Harper's Ferry, Virginia, back then West Virginia. Nowadays, it's literally the border. And they had two significant revolts, um, which is Nat Turner, who killed over 50 men, women, and children near Norfolk, and now John Brown. John Brown is a northerner. He fought out in Kansas for, uh, in what was known as Bleeding Kansas, where you have the Southerners and the Northerners competing to pass um, their respective parties for free state or slave state, and this is sort of the real turning point, and James B. Cannon um, doesn't really do a whole lot about this situation. It's every single president up until Lincoln sort of just moved it along or progressed it. Eli Whitney's cotton gin, to thinking he's about to end slavery and like make it die down, makes it even double, some sometimes triple, the amount of popularity it has in the United States. So when these two um, people are in an election against each other for president, things are going to get rough if something goes wrong. And immediately off the bat, when Lincoln live, wins the election, he is forced, when he is on his way from Springfield, Illinois, where he was for the Electoral College votes, um, receiving notice every once in a while, the train he makes booked to Washington he has to ride around in disguise with a bunch of bodyguards since there was a big plot out to get him after that. And it wasn't even really a optional thing. It was if something goes wrong or Douglas doesn't get elected, we are going to go through with this. And they did. Thank goodness they didn't get him, though. Otherwise... He, nothing really changed besides slavery because he's still going to be the first person assassinated, assassinated in office.
quick illustration for you. I'm, and of course, YouTube, this is blanks. This is a cap. You cannot, you cannot fire anything out of this. Um, all blank. Please, don't. It's something I like to use a lot. Anyways. Afterwards, we have the first southern state seceding in the name of South Carolina, December 1860. And this is where some people, particularly um, a channel I'm going to talk about in a few days, get confused or outright ignore the fact that South Carolina votes for secession in the secession documents. They state in the first two sentences that the art article of slavery is the reason why they have chosen to separate from the federal government of the United States of America. And... Sorry, just something. And... Soon after, many more states will follow, seizing key forts or ports controlled by federal outposts. One of these is, of course, the most famous, Fort Sumter. Fort Sumter is along the chart, is pretty much the, in the, located in the middle of Charleston Harbor, South Carolina. And they have about a garrison of 60 men there. Um, the commander there will hold out for about, I believe it's um, two weeks on low supplies. And Washington, well, Lincoln, will send a supply ship down in the name of da, 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 the Star of the West. And um, the assistant of the Navy Secretary, na whose name, well, sorry, Navy Secretary, whose name is Gideon Wells, will send his assistant down to actually um, captain the ship. And before they can even get into the harbor, they are fired on by some of the other forts along the shoreline. And these are the s spots that will eventually um, fire on the fort itself on April 12, 1861. <sighs> so, with the surrender, call Lincoln calls for 75,000 men to put down the rebellion. Now, at this point, Tennessee, Arkansas, Virginia, Maryland, and Kentucky are all on the Union side. Kentucky and Maryland stay with the Union after um, Lincoln calls for 75,000 men to put down the rebellion in these southern states. In response, Jefferson Davis, the newly elected president in May of 1861, will call out for about 100,000 men to, you know, defend the country land and... Initially, the capital city was Montgomery, Alabama, but since it was farther down south and was more population populated, now when Virginia secedes, the capital then gets moved to Richmond. Why? Because it's more industrial, but if more men are going to be gathering at a place just 90 miles from Washington, D.C., that means a quick end to the war or a bad way to lose. Literally. And they draw up their armies. We have Robert Patterson. Um, we have all these men coming around wa Washington. One of these groups is um, under the command of Brigadier... Brigadier... 
General Robert Patterson with a force of about 18,000. And then to more towards D.C., we have the command um, of what was called the Army of North Eastern Virginia under the command of Brigadier General Irvin McDowell. McDowell's been appointed this position since he's one of, since he's, you know, a West Point graduate. He, um, like many others, served in the Mexican-American War. I might be wrong about that. Um, and he is assigned to this duty because he is a personal friend of Lincoln. Well, personal friends that of Lincoln don't go too well. Especially when um, going to take the town of Alexandria right across from D.C., um, an important place if you have armies gathering. As they are marching through Alexandria, they come across at the Marshall House in Alexandria. So... While the, they are taking down this Confederate flag from that um, Lincoln could see from the White House, he orders the 5th New York to go take it down. He, um, the commander of the 5th New York, is Colonel Elmer Ellsworth. Ellsworth, um, how do you, I don't know how to, you say it, and he will go up the Marshall House on, in May 1861, and <coughs> he'll take this flag down along with a reporter and, um, Along with a reporter and one of the soldiers, the innkeeper of the Marshall House, whose name is James W. Jackson, will level a double-barreled shotgun and fire two shots straight into Ellsworth's chest. This is responded to by Private Francis E. Brownell, who will later receive the Medal of Honor for his actions on May 24, 1861, Avenging his fallen colonel. Um, with this step in progress, they will now move towards the Manassas Junction. All along the way, we have cavalry scouts head through the small, small town of Fairfax Courthouse, also known as Fairfax, Virginia, near um, Centerville, Chantilly, and Vienna, Virginia, all surrounding it. And this will engage with a small, small um, battle that it ends up costing the first Confederate officer's life. Which, um, when I used to live back there at that town, that's where I grew up, um, it has since been taken down, the monument dedicated to him since he was killed there. And they also had two... Um, howitzer cannons from the Navy Yard that were actually assigned to the 71st New York Infantry, which will later fight at Bull Run. I'll get into that later. And those two guns are commanded in, um, by Colonel, uh, well, the then Captain Augustus Van Horn Ellis, one of the heroes at Devil's Den in the Battle of Gettysburg on July 2nd. But not for now, we're talking about July 18th. Is when the official, is when officially the army will move in. McDowell orders through, um, orders Daniel Tyler's division to cross at Blackburn's Ford to scope out sort of the area and test the Confederates. This sort of ends horribly, as his elements, when they approach, they encounter the Confederates, but they aren't aware of that. Their colonel shouts out to 
these men, they don't know that they're rebels, and they are both confused as who they are. Now, this is actually um, the forces under James Longstreet, you know that name, and he'll call out to the other commander, this is the Union side, saying, who is that? It's like, oh, we're the so-and-so. To which the Confederates respond by opening fire and killing him instantly, which sends them back, retreating across the stream of Bull Run. On the night of the 20th, they will then have a massive flanking maneuver to attack on the left side of the Confederate forces, which, um, by the early morning, they cross it. Sudley Springs Ford are spotted by someone famous from Gettysburg again, Edward Porter Alexander, and his crew of flag weavers up on Signal Hill. Sorry, this is a little bent. And he, on the morning of the 21st, will wave and his signal flag over to a small, small brigade commander of the 3rd uh, Brigade or 7th Brigade of the Army of Northern Virginia. That's like the later... And he will call out, look out on your left, you are turned, which means that they are about to be flanked. Who's they? The 1st Louisiana Special Battalion under the command of Major, um, Major Wheat and the 4th South Carolina. This brigade... It's commanded by Nathan Shanks Evans, Colonel Nathan Shanks Evans. He, as famously told by a lot of people there, especially park rangers, likes, has one of his um, staff officers carry a keg of whiskey on their, on their back so he can enjoy a sip every once in a while. Tomorrow I will get into the details of the fight on Matthews Hill and eventually in the eventual retreat to Henry Hill, followed up by Shin, Shin Ridge. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and comment what you want to see comment what you want to see after I'm done with this series or just done for this part right now. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. No, seriously, subscribe, guys.